So this will be a teardown of a Lenovo ADL170 NDC2A power supply. And this is a 170 watt power supply for things like the workstation W540, W541, P50, P51, P52, etc. These will work with the uh, ThinkPads, as well, regular ThinkPad laptops as well, like a T460, but they're a little overpowered and oversized for those when you can easily get by with a 45 watt. The only reason I'm tearing this one down is because it's physically damaged. It probably does still work, but it's not safe. So this point where the plug is, the surrounding plastic is busted off. I believe it's because it got brittle and the adapter was dropped. At least that's the most logical uh, speculation. So what happens with that piece is, so we use this stick of memory here as an example of the sidewall of the outer housing. And then the plug, basically the edge profile of the plug, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have like two tabs that are sticking out of the shape. So what happens is it goes, you know, just a reminder, this is the side of the main housing, and this is the plug. It goes down and kind of notches over the little lip sticking out of the housing, and that kind of locks it into place all the way around. Since the outside surround of the plug is busted, there's nothing to hold it in place. It's an unfortunate failure because, like I said, power supply could be good still, but it's one of those things where it's just it's not worth fixing. But I figured at least see what's inside. Uh, and I already see a bummer that's going to be a pain. These have security Torx bits, and I don't have my security bits here, so I'm going to grab those real quick. Alrighty. Yep. See if I can be lazy. Funny thing about security. Nope, that's gonna snap my tip. All right, I'm gonna go grab the right thing for the job. All right. Well, oh, I got the bits I need. Hopefully, the other possibility is I'm missing the one I need. Looks like it's a security T10. This is not a security T10. Nope, not gonna bite. <laughs> Um, so on a security bit, there's a little center pin sticking out, and uh, the, or I'm sorry, the, on, a, on a security screw, there's a center pin that's sticking out in the middle, so you have to have a bit with a hole in the middle for that pin to go into, which unfortunately I need to go find, because apparently this set is missing some stuff. <laughs> well, hopefully, this is... Oops, round two. And security 10, T10, if that's in the right spot. Oops. There we are. Some nice long coarse thread screws. They are being screwed directly into the plastic, not into any uh, brass bushings of any kind. And there you go, you can kind of see the little pin in there. That makes this a uh, security Torx 10. And like the Dell power supply, I tore apart. Pretty standard housing. One thing I just noticed about this is these would actually make decent project boxes if you were uh, making something. Um, yeah, I haven't plugged it in recently, so I might actually save that. Oops, like I bet I could fit a Raspberry Pi in there and then uh, I could probably make a uh, Keystone Jack fit in that opening almost. That might be worth saving. Put the screws back where they belong. That is one of the, the I'm trying to think how I want to word this. So, uh, with the higher wattage power supplies, usually they're screwed together versus uh, plastic well, or well, not plastic welded. Um, I believe they're ultrasonic welded plastic. They don't use like glues and stuff. But 
these have usually have uh, screwed together power supplies. So yeah, uh, got some good salvage potential there. Don't know why I can't speak. <laughs> Just gonna put those screws back in their holes. And I'll throw this in the save pile. Maybe do something. Put a little LED indicator there even maybe. I don't know. Be a fun little project box. And who made this power supply? I guess I don't need to have bad written on there anymore. Well. Unless I'm mistaken, it doesn't look like there's uh markings. Hmm. I don't know who made this. Oh well. So I could replace that connector, but that's not worth the time. It's the ten dollar power supply, I believe. And you can see where all that plastic's been busted off. So there would have been another ring on the outside. Like I said, that's how that kind of notches into the case. Oh, probably playing with fire here, not uh, being careful with gloves or anything, but uh, like I said, I don't believe this has been plugged in for a while now. And unfortunately, I can't really discharge anything until I get the shield off. Should probably be wearing gloves for this. These thin sheets of metal can get kind of pokey. Um, let's see, where out? I poked myself with a screwdriver. Be handy if I had a knife. Do I have anything sharp over here? Nope. Uh, I think I'm gonna go grab some more tools. Seems I don't have enough yet. <laughs> You know, I've got some side clutters and two right hand gloves because that's how I roll. <laughs> God. If I put this stuff back where it belonged, this would be a problem. There we go. At least now I have a false sense of security while I'm touching exposed stuff. Got a little, um, I think it's called Celastic for vibrations and stuff. Got a copper shim here for thermal transfer. It looks like from this transformer with some insulating plastic to isolate it electrically, I'm, I'm assuming. Hmm. Because this was touching stuff that would be live, but it must be isolating it from the rest of the circuit, I guess. Um, I'd cut these solder joints. Along with potentially, oh no, those aren't rivets. All right, I was gonna say, it looks like that might be riveted as well. So let's see here. Expose the bottom next. We've got some fancy 3M stuff there. Or uh, insulating tape, I guess. There's nothing to insulate it from though on the bottom. Lots of uh, this white stuff. Kind of hard though. Expecting to be more rubbery. I believe this is intended for uh, like vibration dampening to stop components from getting busted off since laptop adapters tend to get thrown around a lot. A little thermal pad here. That's awfully fancy. Huh. Just helping cool the bottom of the transformer and some other stuff, I guess. I don't know. And this little chip here has like a little plastic shield around it. I'm not going to clean that off to see what all is under there. Too much work. But... Quite a bit going on in here. A couple of big transformers. 
Looks like uh, no heat sink I can pry off. Potentially. Yep. Just more of that white goop holding it on. Coils and a full rear rectifier right there. Um, yeah. Some big beefy capacitors. I don't know that brand ZLH. Don't know if that's any good or not. My go-to is Rubicon, but with the problem with everything being counterfeit nowadays, it's so hard to buy genuine stuff. I had some Rubicon capacitors I bought for a project and they failed in the bag before I even got to use them. <laughs> but looks like uh got a fuse right there. This would be easier to read if it wasn't upside down. So it looks like that might be 4 amps, 250 volts. What's the input rating on this? 2.5 amps. <laughs> Not sure what T4A stands for. 4A would make me think 4 amps though. And various power transistors and stuff. So, yeah, kind of neat on the inside. But... Hopefully that was interesting, but it took a little longer to look at than it should have, but either way, thanks for watching.